radio version of After Hours with T.C. Ristani. I am your host, Mr. T.C. Ristani. we got an unbelievable show. We're going to talk with South Boston Jeff about his big autograph excursion down in New York City and New Jersey. But without any further ado, let's take our big time first commercial break. And guess what? The madness will begin. Yeah! Hey fans, check out my YouTube page to relive eight years of After Hours. See movie stars, playmates, and a who's who of talented individuals. Check us out at www.youtube.com backslash After Hours TC. And remember, here in After Hours, we never close. All right, as you can tell by that music, it's none other than South Boston Jeff Celebrity Stockings. What's going on, everyone? What's happening, Jeff? Now, recently we were down in New Jersey, Parsippany, New Jersey, to go to the unbelievable Chiller Theater Horror and Movie Memorabilia Convention, and we met some who's who's of people down there. Oh, yeah, had a great time, great time, many big names. Now, this is we've been going to this show now for about maybe like 12, 13 years. How about that? And we've met a lot of who's who's and a lot of has-beens at this show. There were uh, a little more has-beens than who's-who's this year, but uh, there were a couple of who's. Unbelievable. And let's start it right off. Look who's on the screen right now. None other than Academy Award winner Martin Landau. Oh, yeah, what a guy. He actually used to be Jack Nicholson's professor in college, taught Jack how to act. Really? And I brought that up to him, So and he, that made him smile. And then I brought up uh, his work in... Uh, the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island, who he wasn't too happy about that one. Now, for those of you who don't know out there, there were three versions of the Gilligan's Island series made into week, uh, you know, movies of the week back in the 70s. There's the original one, there what was it, uh, The Castaways on Gilligan's Island, Rescue from Gilligan's Island, and then, of course, the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. They really jumped the shock on that one. And the, and the synopsis of that one, Jeff, was that the Harlem Globetrotters were in a plane accident and almost got eaten by Jaws right. and ended up on Gilligan's Island. But there's this crazy mad scientist played by Martin Landau who had this team of robots. And the whole deal was he bet Thurston Howell the fourth, not the third, but the fourth, his son, that if uh, his uh, his team of the New Invincibles, that's what their names were, if they beat the Harlem Globetrotters, they own Gilligan's Island. Yes, because it belonged to Jim Backus, uh, Mr. Howell, who bought the island when they got rescued. But if you think it's worth watching, which I don't, um, check out the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. So what was his actual reaction when you brought up, uh, you know, here's a guy who won an Academy Award for Ed Wood. Uh, he played Bella Lugosi in it. And, you know, he was on Space 1999. He was recently on Entourage. Right. Uh, and you bring up the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island. Oh, he kind of looked like he wanted to throw up. I mean, he uh, his face just went blank. <laughs> uh, you're probably the only person in that building that actually remembered the Harlem Globetrotters on Gilligan's Island, other than myself. Proud to say, proud to say. Now, uh, he was actually a very friendly guy. I mean, he made a fortune that weekend signing autographs with these people. What was it, like $35 to get your picture taken with them? Yep. Uh, well, 25 and 30 for an, uh, for an autograph picture. That's so a little steep, but yeah. he is an Academy Award winner, and he's 85 years old, and God bless him, he was a real nice guy. Unlike some of the other jabronis we'll be talking about that we met over the weekend down there. But on the screen, it's like Academy Award Central here, Jeff. You talking about Mott Landau was the professor for Jack Nicholson in college, and there was Jack Nicholson's co-star on the screen right now, Academy Award winner Louise Fletcher, who played Nurse Ratchet in One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. Oh, yeah, very nice lady. As you can see, I'm wearing my eye patch. Uh, it was a long day of stalking, and... Uh it's a very rare piece, but she was a very nice lady. Now, we actually did a little covert operation to get the uh, the uh, photo that, that you have there. Like we said, when you go to these autograph convention things, the stars pick and choose their prices that they want to do. Now, actually, Louise Fletcher, Nurse Ratchet, didn't want to charge people to take pictures with them. But there was this little Uncle Fester-looking bastard sitting next to her. He goes, now it's $20 per everything, $20 per everything. Even if you want to look at it, it was $20. So basically what we did was we harassed other celebrities during the, uh, during the convention. And I said, Jeff, you know, we're going to go back, you know, 
know, this show wraps up at like 10, 30, 11 o'clock. She's got to get up and leave. So what we did was we waited for her in front of the table, pretended like we were talking to other people. And then when she came out, we shanghaied her. And as you can see on the screen, there it is, Nurse Ratchet in the flesh. Yep, and if you'll notice, uh, she still has the Purell in her hands from wiping the ink off her hands from a long day of signing. Well, not only that, how many jabronis did she meet in a period of five hours? There's got to be like 5,000 people that go to this thing. Oh, yeah, a lot of handshaking. Yeah. Now, we're talking about an unbelievable pop culture icon is on the screen right now. Look at who it is. It's none other than Burt Young, Paulie from Rock. Hey, he was a pretty nice guy, I must say. Actually, he was a really nice guy. I mean, he actually complimented you on your eye patch. Give him the story. I walked up to him. He said, well, hey, yeah, what's with the eye patch? Uh, well, so tell me the story. And I said, well, it's nothing interesting. I just uh, got out of surgery and everything. I wish I could tell you a tough boxing story, but uh, I invited him to, uh, to Peter Welch's gym, my uh, cousin's gym in South Boston, and uh, he said he might show up. And he also said, hey, that's not a, that's not an eye patch. It's a badge of honor. And you actually went ape shit when you saw when he said that. You were like trembling, going, "Oh my god, I just got the greatest compliment from Bali from Rocky." That's right, that's right, and uh, really, still a very strong guy. One of the things he did is said, "Hey, feel my forearm," and I'll tell you that forearm was like a rock. Was it like a rock? I wouldn't like it off the side no of my pun head. Intended. <laughs> now you brought up his uh, wonderful performance in the 1986 classic Back to School with Rodney Dangerfield, where he played Lou the Bodyguard. That's right, I did. Um, <laughs> Now I can understand why Rodney picked him for that role and everything and why he crushed that can. I bet he really crushed the can in real life before he said, You got a problem? No, I ain't got a problem. Now you do. Hell of a nice guy. Unbelievable. Burt Young, if you're out there, we'd love to have you on the program. In the flesh. Unbelievable. Rocky wouldn't be Rocky without Pauly. No, it certainly wouldn't. One of the best characters. All right, then we made our way through all the little side rooms there, and we came across one of uh, Jeff's favorite movies of all time, which is Revenge of the Nerds. It's one of my favorites, too, also. And we met none other than Brian Toshi, who played Toshiro. Yep, he was a really nice guy. And uh, we met a few of them. We met uh, Julia Montgomery, who played Betty Childs. Uh, we met Carradine, who played Lewis. Yeah, but they were charging astronomical amounts of money to get their pictures taken with them. I mean, what was Lewis charging, like $32? Something like that. Yeah, it's not worth it. Betty Child, you actually almost had a heart attack when Julie Montgomery put out on her display table the actual eat a pie for charity pie that they used in Revenge of the Nerds. That's why I didn't have to dig through a pile of whipped cream to get at that picture. That's my pie. Out of all the celebrities we ever met, the two from Revenge of the Nerds, uh, Julia Montgomery and Brian Toshi, were aces in our book. I drink to that. Oh, they certainly were. They were both very nice. And as you can see on the screen right now, Brian Toshi signed an autograph for my good friend Andy, who lives up in Canada, who is a huge, huge fan of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. When I told her that I, I met none other than Leonardo, she almost had a heart attack. Hell, pie. I didn't know that. Did Brian Toshi play Leonardo? He did the voice in the movie. Oh, I never knew that. Corey Feldman did some other character in there, but yeah, it was definitely him. I'm aware of his work in Police Academy 3 and 4, but... Yeah, what was his name in Police Academy 3 and 4? His name was Atamago Nogata from Toshikawa Nogatas. <laughs> What's he... your favorite line from Revenge of the Nerds from uh, Toshiro? Um, that would have to be, oh, looks like salad. <laughs> Robster cries. What the fuck are robster cries? <laughs> Hair pie. <laughs> Hair pie indeed. Which brings us to another person that we met down there. Uh, we're talking about none other than former triple X porn star turned mainstream actress Tracy Lord. Now look at the picture on the screen right now. She's dressed as what? Like a sensual vampiress. Yeah, sexy vampire with a red dress ready to suck my blood or something else. Uh, uh, it's a family show there, Jeff. Family oh, show. show. Now, but I've had a crush on Tracy Lords ever since I was probably like 15 or 16, and she was she was probably the same age at the time. Now, you actually said something to her. Now, what did you actually say to her? And she said, yeah, I'll let you tell the story. Okay, I told her that I just checked out her last movie. Uh, it was called I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell, and where, she, uh, and where she gets a chronic case of diarrhea. And she said, oh... Uh, so what'd you think of that movie? She wasn't very impressed, but what was I supposed to say? 
Hey, I love the way you take it in the keister. I mean, there's not really much I can say to Tracy Lords because I don't want to piss her off and I don't want her to blacklist me. Now, didn't you say I've been a fan of yours for like 100 years? And didn't she, what, what was her response to that? All right, I hope you're not still a fan. <laughs> <laughs> Unbelievable. Which brings us to the main event. Now, we don't have any pictures of these people because we weren't paying their astronomical prices, but they had a reunion of the 1982 teenage sex romp, The Last American Virgin, Jeff. Now, who were the people that from the movie that were actually there? Okay, there was um, Lawrence Monison, who, uh, who played Gary, the lead character, the pizza boy. There was uh, Diane Franklin, who played his girlfriend. Who is still... Who is a MILF, by the way. Oh, yeah, she's still looking pretty she good. She looks exactly the same as she did in uh, Last American Virgin. And, of course, she was the French chick in the movie Better Off Dead. Yep, she was. And she was also in Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure as one of the medieval babes. That is right. I forgot about that. She was one of the medieval babes. Well, she still is a medieval babe. And, uh, okay, the, um, there was also Louisa Moritz, who okay. was... Oh, <laughs> Now, Louisa admits, now, let's let's paint a picture here. She played the Spanish uh, or Cuban hooker in uh, that movie, The Last American Virgin. Oh, she was just a horny old Spanish girl ready to give some lessons to the next pizza boy who came along. And she was also one of the two chicks in uh, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest that broke into the nuthouse near the end of the movie. That's right. She played Rose, and uh, she actually could have walked up to Louise Fletcher and Nurse Ratchet and said, yeah, thanks for ho throwing me out of the ho out of the hospital, bitch. <laughs> there you go. It was, a, it was a cuckoo's nest reunion kind of in a way. Now... Obviously, Cuckoo's Nest in these movies came out 30, almost 40 years ago. So people change in those uh, in that time period. Now, you were all over her like white on rice, Jeff. Uh, give us the full one. Give us the tale about meeting Louisa Moritz. Okay, well, I first I spotted her from the back, and I saw the platinum blonde hair. I said, oh, that's her. That's Louisa Moritz. So I walked up to her poked her on the shoulder, she turned around, and it was like a horror movie. <laughs> because uh, she didn't age that attractively. Yeah, she aged pretty horribly. She kind of looks like Lonnie Anderson's corpse. <laughs> and your exact quote, and I had to leave the room because I broke up in stitches, <laughs> you were like, she looks like a sea hag. <laughs> I hope she didn't hear me. Now, she wanted you to come down and do a panel discussion with her about, because you, you're like the IMDB for Louisa Moritz. Yeah, I pretty much uh, brought up about ten of her movies. I said, oh, yes, you were in one of my favorites, One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest. You were in Up in Smoke as a cokehead cop. <laughs> you were in Death Race, Death, Death Race 2000. Was that oh, with she Sylvester was... Stallone? Yes, that one. I even think she was in Scrooge, sitting on a Xerox machine. But... Yes, uh, I ended up giving her a hug and everything, and she wanted me to come down to the convention the next day and everything and stick around for the Q&A so I could bring up her movies. Now, <laughs> the main star of Last American Version, all right, if you even want to call him that, was, now for those of you who haven't seen the movie, why don't you give us the 411, Jeff? Give us the plot of The Last American Virgin. Okay, the plot of Last American Virgin is there is this pizza guy, him and his two buddies, and they're all just trying to get laid and everything. But Larry Monison, nothing ever works out for him in any movie, like it didn't in Friday the 13th and Part 4, and it certainly didn't in Mask. And they were all just trying to get laid. First they went to a hooker, and they all ended up getting crabs. And he was in love with this girl, but his girl cheated on him with one of his friends. And, well, nothing went w well for him for the for the whole entire duration for the movie. And for those of you who have seen that movie, the end credits just once that 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 cool song was. A, I mean, that movie ended on a real real down note. I mean, he got in his little uh, pizza delivery car and just drove away crying. We don't know what happened to Gary. There's no sequel to The Last American Virgin or anything like that. But <laughs> well, just like the song says, he did his best, but I guess his best wasn't good enough. Yeah. Absolutely not. But one of the main stars of that movie, one of the trifecta there, the three kids that were trying to get their rocks off, was none other than Joe Robo. 
Rubbo. Oh, oh, Rubbo, oh, Robo, whatever. Fantastic. <laughs> now, for those of you who haven't seen the movie, this guy has done absolutely nothing since this movie, but he's like an icon for people who are fans of this movie. He played the character David, the fat kid in the movie. Now, he was a... Uh... Well, he was kind of like wallpaper. Yeah, like if you didn't, if he didn't have his name right in front of him, you'd probably walk right past him and everything. And I don't know where they dug him up, but uh, I recently requested him on Facebook. Oh, and did you? And hopefully, I'll be friends with Joe Rubbo. <laughs> well, you'd be. Well, how many friends do you think he has on there? Five. <laughs> Not many. Not Unbelievable. Many. Now, we went into another room, and you had all these, you know, these WWE divas and whatnot, but we saw Louis Gossett Jr. Lou Gossett Jr. Talk about the damn shark's mother. From Jaws 3, Officer and a Gentleman, Academy Award winner and whatnot. But Louis Gossett Jr. looks like he ate the damn shark's mother. Yeah, he definitely put on some weight. Nice guy. But uh, also in that room was Pam Greer from uh, Jackie Brown. Oh, yeah. I mean, uh... She- she aged okay. She wasn't looking that bad and everything, and I've been quite a fan of hers for quite a few years, with like uh, movies like Foxy Brown, Jackie Brown, and Coffee. So, and I'm even a fan of a couple of her Robert Corman, Roger Corman's Women in Prison movies. What about her role as a Hershey in Escape from L.A., the sequel to Escape from New York? Almost forgot about that one. Yep, almost forgot. Now, what about Betsy Russell? Now, she was a chick that rode topless on the horse in the 1983 classic Private School with Phoebe Cates and your buddy from Full Metal Jacket. Right. Uh, well, I haven't seen that movie in a while. You know who I'm talking about. Betsy Russell? No, no, the guy from uh, Full Metal Jacket. Matthew Modine. Matthew Modine was in that as well. Now, Betsy Russell, this girl, if there's a MILF heavyweight championship, there's a picture on the screen right now. This woman is 50 years old. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. You'd swear she was like 30. Whoa. Unbelievable. I mean, <clears throat> when you, you know, if you're a child of the 80s like me and Jeff, when all these has come to these conventions, you flock to it because you're curious to see what happened to some of these people. Right. And, uh, you know, did you ever think in, you know, 30 years ago when you watched The Last American Virgin that you'd run into Joe Rubbo? I had no idea, but uh, maybe we'll be lucky enough. He'll Maybe he'll grace our show sometime. You never know. I mean, we have, we've had, uh, you know, Pat Marita and the Iron Sheik on the program, Intoxicated. Why not have Joe Rubbo on the program? That would be a blast. Now, the one, the only Joe Rubbo. It was also kind of an insult to fans. Now, Elvira, Mistress of the Dock, was there. She was and everything, and you just uh, just your picture with her costs you $40. Yeah, $40 to take your picture with Elvira, Mistress of the Dark. I mean, if th- th- I'd pay $40 if this was 1987, but come on, it's 2011. She says that it's going to be the last time she's going to don the, um, the wig and the boobs, but we'll see until the next convention. Right, yeah, how much money she made? Her line was like four hours long for people who want to get their picture with Elvira. Well, I um, I went up and pulled her to the side, and I did, did compliment her on, I complimented her on her work in Cheech and Chong's next movie, where she played an extra in a Cheech and Chong's Incredible Hulk thing. She, her name, and she said, that movie was never made. And Unbelievable. She t- also, uh, we're gonna wrap this up real quick. The three remaining cast members of What's Happening were there. Raj. His, uh, his sister D and hey hey hey, Dwayne. Well, yeah, they certainly were there and they looked pretty good and everything. All, um, but the fact is, I never watched that show. Whenever that wow 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 wow, whenever that theme came on, I kind of turned the channel. Nothing against them. Nothing against them. Just not a fan. Were you a Good Times fan? I certainly was. Really? They they should have brought in JJ. Yep, I'm sure he's not doing that much these days. <laughs> so all in all, uh, score to one to ten. What did you give Chilla 2011? I would give it an eight and a half. An eight and a half. And what was your highlight of the entire weekend, Jeff? I would say my highlight of the entire weekend was uh, rubbing elbows with Tracy Lords. Of course, I... I'd like to be rubbing something else, but we'll get to that maybe later. And on that note, we're going to wrap up this big time radio broadcast. As always, South Boston, Jeff. Thank you very much. See you later, y'all.